So here we have die switch drums from It Might Get Loud. So the name should be a pretty, pretty quick giveaway to the sort of sound they're going for here. Die switch engage. <laughs> you can get it over here at itmightgetloud.org. It's a small kit, but very punchy. Going for the sounds of the early 2000s uh, New England metalcore drum sound, VST, AU, and AAX formats. Head down here and listen to some samples if you want. Sounds pretty good, right? All right, so you can head over here and listen to uh, more of that. Of course, watch the uh, watch the video there. So as you can see, this features mix ready samples that cut through even the densest mix. One kick, one snare, three toms, hi hat ride, two crashes, China stack, and uh, two splashes. Also has a essential MIDI pack. All right, about sixty megabytes total. So pretty small, but it sounds uh, sounds pretty good. We'll also be using some of the MIDI packs that uh, they have here on it might get loud so you can check those out as well they have quite a few midi packs here so in this video what we're going to focus on is not necessarily the sound as much as how do you actually use this now it's going to be a little bit different depending on the daw that you're using we are using uh, uh pro tools here all right so right now we have this loaded up on an instrument track so here's the interface a very nice interface and you can of course click the drums to actually hear them So these are processed samples ready to go. Which of course you can process them further if you want. Okay. So that's the basics of, of the interface there. Pretty simple to figure out. So then we have our output routing. Right now we have it going out one stereo output. You can also choose your 12 separate outputs there. But we're going to get to that once we get to the mixer. So let's go ahead and head to the mixer because this is where uh, probably most people are a little bit confused, at least if they're new. It's not hard to understand once you uh, once you uh, take a look at it. So basics of the mixer here. Let's go ahead and play back some here. So of course we have our volume, which should be pretty self-explanatory. Then you have your pan knobs. Right. Just set things up however you want. Solos. And of course your mutes. All right. Now we're going to skip over this section and head on to the uh, MIDI notes section. This is important if you have a drum brain or even if you're programming your, uh, your MIDI here in Pro Tools. Now it's different in other DAWs and this is why I pointed out some DAWs you might be saying, well, why are you pointing this out? It's pretty easy to figure out because it, you know, it actually shows me what each number corresponds to that doesn't have in here in Pro Tools. So this is why I'm pointing it out. All right, let me grab my pencil tool. Just double click over here to get into our uh, MIDI editor here or into the piano roll. So if I hit one or sorry, C1, that's triggering our kick. That triggers nothing. That's our snare, which as you can see is on 38. So these numbers correspond to actual notes. So if you happen to come in here and change something, okay, so for your, for your kick, which for general MIDI is gonna be, or at least it should be your C1. If you change this to 35 and you play C1, nothing happens. Well, that's because you changed the note that corresponds to your, you know, your CC numbers, your MIDI, your MIDI numbers there. So it's actually the note before that. Okay, so that's how that works across all of these uh, different uh, MIDI notes here. Now keep in mind things like hi-hat, they have several different notes associated with them. So your closed, your pedal, your semi-open, your open are all going to be different, you know, different lanes here uh, in Pro Tools. Now again, in some DAWs, it's going to be more evident. It's not really that evident here in Pro Tools, which is why I'm, I'm pointing it out. Okay, so if you change something, so if I go up one, guess what that is? So it was C, now it's what? C sharp, right? So there you go. Okay, on to this mixer section. Now, 
because this kit is already uh, processed and processed very well, uh, might I add, let me go back here, back to clips and make sure I grab this. Right, that already sounds really good. So you could really leave everything as MIDI if you want, or you could port everything out to one integrated, you know, one two bus uh, a stereo track for all of your drums. But if you want more control over over everything and you want to record all this to separate tracks and use your own plugins on them, we can do that. Uh, we can actually do that right here, but let's look at it in the mixer because it makes a little more sense. Okay, so right here, you can see everything is going out one right here under outputs. Everything is going out one. If I change my kick to two, and I play back, we're not hearing the kick. That's because it's going out a different output. If we look down here, you can actually see this plugin is spitting out up to 16, okay, of, of stereo outputs. All right, so change that back to one, and you'll get it all integrated. Now that's fine, again, but if you want everything split up to separate tracks, then you would want to set everything up differently. So we can leave kick on one, we could go snare two, Tom three, you can also click in here and add whatever, you'll know, put whatever number that you want. But an easier way to do that is they already have it set up for you. Use your drop down, say 12 separate outputs that actually takes us all the way up to 13. Now in order to use this, if I just play back again, again, we're just hearing our kick. Why? Because kick is going out one. And this track here is uh, outputting one. Okay, it's not going to output channel two, three, four, five, all the way to 13 or 16 of what we have. So in this case, we're gonna to have to make those tracks or create those tracks. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we can use aux tracks if we want. Of course, with aux tracks, you can't actually record onto the aux track. So it would be more like you're using the aux track to just put individual plugins uh, on the drums and then record all of that out to your, your master, your two bus there. And uh, you could record things like that if you want, but you're more than likely gonna to wanna to use audio tracks. Now we can use mono tracks, but you probably want to use stereo just because it's outputting stereo. Don't think that stereo means it's going to be coming out from way left and way right. You can still have your center image coming right down the middle. Okay, so we're just going to use stereo just because it uh, you know, makes more sense for our outputs, at least in, in my opinion. All right, so what we need is we can do a full 16, but we really only need 13. We'll do 14. Okay, go and create all of those. There they are. Now here in Pro Tools and I'm on Windows, I'll hold on Control Alt Shift. Everything is still selected. Uh, press that there, and I can release those buttons, by the way. And I'll just choose two, and that will go ahead and give me output two, output three, four, five, all the way down, okay? So I don't have to do all of that manually through each of these, each of these tracks, all right? So again, I play back, I'm only hearing the kick. That's because we have to actually monitor what we wanna hear here, at least in Pro Tools. So I'll just hold on Alt, choose that I there. Actually, we take that off because I get a little doubling when I'm uh, speaking in the mic. So I'll just do a few of these here. Okay. So now when I play back, there we go. So of course, the smart thing to do at this point would be to name these. So snare, and then go on all through here. So Tom one, Tom two, uh, so on and so forth, and match all of these up to your uh, to your outputs there. Okay, but what about that kick? Because kick is coming out one. So that means it's coming out of this track here. We have a couple options. One is you could change the number, okay? Or you could just say, create a new track here and uh, you know bust that sound out from this track into that kick track. We're not even using this track down here. We're not even using 15. So let's, let's uh, leave that at 15 and we're gonna change this number here to 15. There we go, that's all there is to it. So I'll play back, monitor this track now. And there we go. So now we're getting kick out of this track. And let me hold down alt, get rid of that, get rid of this, grab this, and let's put it up here. There we go. So now we're all set up and we have all of our tracks, all of our different drums split out to different uh, different tracks. Just come down here. Very 
cool. So of course you go through and you name all of these here. Now, once you're done naming everything, go ahead and you know set up your mixer within your uh, die switch drums here, however you want it. Set up your panning in here. If you want, you could of course pan everything uh, afterwards because we are on audio tracks and we can of course do that. That's enough for there. And of course you'd want to record your, your drums. Just grab this here and we'll just record. Okay, and that's all we need. Uh, just for the example there. Very good. Get rid of those. Very good. So now we have all of our tracks recorded. Then you can go through and just add whatever plugins you want. I'm not going to show you how to mix because that would, of course, would make this seven hours long. But add whatever plugins you want and mix just like you had recorded a uh, a real drum track with, you know, live drums and microphones and uh, and whatnot. Okay. So that's how you split all of your drums out two different tracks. Now, of course, I click and I'm not hearing anything. Again, if that happens to you, remember what you're doing here. We have everything split out to different inputs, so you'd have to actually monitor that track, at least here in Pro Tools, to actually hear what you're doing. Okay? You can also quickly switch this to one, so now everything will come out of one. And then always switch it right back. Now again, because of the way this is set up, we have this set up for 15. So we just need to uh, you just remember that. And then monitor it. And there's our snare. Okay. Now you may not need to mix much with this kit simply because it's already pre-processed, but that doesn't mean you can't, uh, you know, process it more, the individual drum tracks more uh, on your own, but that's basically everything you need to know. The definitive guide on how to actually use die switch drums from it might get loud. Okay, again, pay attention to your MIDI notes whenever you're programming uh, or using your drum brain. Always pay attention to your outputs if you're not getting sound. The easiest way is to just quickly cycle this. Okay, and of course, all of your basic options: your solos and your mutes and your pans and and your volume and of course your master volume. All right, so that's the definitive guide on how to actually use die switch drums. Once again, head over to this site to purchase it, learn more about it, listen to more full drum mixes. But now we're going to uh, have a little uh, demo of die switch drums. We're going to use some of the MIDI packs from It Might Get Loud as well, so you can get an idea of how die switch drums actually sounds. Thank <laughs> you.